Hi everybody, this is Gijs again with another review and I hope you are doing well. This time it is a tent stove. It is the Winnowell Woodlander Medium. So if you want to know if this stove is going to warm me in my tent teepee this night, watch the video. And welcome back to the review of the Winnowell Woodlander Medium Tent Stove. And Winnowell Woodlander, this is going to be a thunk breaker. Is that a good English word? I'm not totally sure. But you know what I mean, I'm going to refer to this stove as the Woodlander from now on. Now, for those of you who are already following me for some while, many thanks for all your likes and also all your comments, because this is something that I really do like. I like to answer your questions and read all your remarks. So if you've got something to say at the end of this video, please post a comment. Um, for those of you who are new to my channel and see one of my videos now for the first time, I would like to say welcome to my channel. Um, I am a Dutch independent gear reviewer and I do bikes sometimes uh, and my name it's a really Dutch name it's Gijs with a very harsh G and when I say independent that means that I'm not being paid by manufacturers to make my reviews and when I tested stuff stuff goes back to the manufacturer as well um, in the past I always said that I don't have any affiliate links but since I'm not earning any money at the moment uh, because of the COVID situation I'm really looking into what I'm going to do with earning money and some people are suggesting that I should go into affiliate links uh, and I know that quite a lot of you buy stuff from my review so maybe there's no uh, problem whatsoever so please give me some feedback on that so let's continue with the Woodlander medium tent stove from Winnowell that's a solution um, first thing um, this is of course quite a large package and so is the tent so this is not something that you take in a backpack of course maybe if you're with a few very strong friends it might be a possibility but no I take this in my car but if you're into Scandinavia it is always possible to do this maybe with a pool car uh, maybe they do this in the north part of the US as well so that might be a suggestion now let's start with the weight and um, I put a lot of stuff into this bag that I need for this video in relation to um, the woodland the medium um, so let me have a check on how this is oh gosh it is 13.92 kilograms. So in this case, it is not a light stove. Um, but I did some other measurements because now I put a lot of stuff in the bag. Um, the weight that you take approximately normally with you is about 12 kilos. And the Winnowell Woodlander medium weights as a stove completely at 9.7 grams. Now let me show you where the difference is between this, what I tell you, the almost 13 kilos and the 9.7 kilos. But then we have to dive into the pouch and get everything out of there. Now, before I open the bag itself, let's talk a little bit about this one and this one. Um, they are basically the safety guard that prevents the hot pipe from uh, the stove getting into the tent fabric and Winnowell does basically two types which is this one which is a sort of a mesh wire mesh um, it's a quite simple one but they also do this one um, and this one is quite spectacular because it looks a little bit like the muffler of my Honda CBR 600 um, it's this one and the good thing about this one is it's of course more heavy than this one but it is um, really a double wall. So this is really a safeguard from your fabric. What I also notice is that if you take this one on the top side, it's covered with a sort of a lid. Um, this one isn't. So if you put this through the tent fabric um, in the top, you will get no rain because of this circular, basically sort of roof type thingy. Um, but in this one, there is a big gap between basically um, the chimney itself and of course this wire steel mesh so you will get some rain between this one when the stove is really hot it really doesn't matter um, but more on that later now those two are quite important and then let's get into the bag itself it's a sort of a sports bag that my girls go to school with or go to school go to their football team with what I do like about um, the bag itself, um, it's not included in the package, it's an extra, um, is that there is quite some space. It's got one main compartment and of course there are two pockets on the side where you can store some gear in it. Uh, now let me start with the main compartment. One thing that I asked um, 
to review as well was basically this piece of cloth. It is a um, fire resistant floor basically that I can put into my tent so that when something falls out of the stove when I open the door um, it doesn't damage the floor of the tent itself. Normally I use a cowhide. Maybe you've seen the review of the 10 TP Saphir 7 that I did I think in 2018. I think there is a cow uh, hide on the floor behind the stove or under the stove. Now then we've got of course we've got the stove itself but first I need to get one thing out of here which is I don't know how you call this in English but it's a rod to get all the ashes out of the stove itself which is of course pretty cool this is a duster that i use it's my own it's not from winnowell i use this one to clean the last bits of course in the morning or after that it's totally cold now let me get winnowell out of its bag and i'll show you let me put this aside um, now let me get it onto its legs foldable legs that's just what i like it's a tripod um, what you saw me doing, the package, like how I take it out of the bag, it is a pack size of 383 millimeters by 230 millimeters uh, by 200 meters, millimeters. And I'll put the US sizes there as well, uh, because you asked that I would do other sizes, not only the metric system. So I will comply to that. Um, but this is the whole package of basically how you get the stove or how you buy the stove. The Winnowell is totally made out of stainless steel and I'll talk a little bit more on the different uh, parts later. But basically the body of the Woodlander is a 304 grade stainless steel. Um, on the sides, basically the under round part and the door and the back, um, it is 1.6 millimeters in thickness. But if you look at the top, there is this little opening. Um, this part is 32 millimeters thick so when you put something on here it's going to retain a little bit more heat than the sides themselves now more on this part later as well now let me fold these two back again and let me show you what's inside um, the stove itself because every part is hidden inside this little stove now the first thing is the spark arrester um, this one weighs 246.2 grams then come the four sections of straight chimney pipe and they weigh 280 grams each then there is the airflow controller that one weighs 344.8 grams and last but not least we've got one grate that weighs 440 grams and then there are of course the two tent protectors where the mesh protector weighs 624.1 grams and the double wall chimney weighs 1367.8 grams. Now, and I remember now how this one is called. It is actually of course the ash scraper. Now let's get the whole gear together and let's get it into the tent and I'll show you how this one burns. Now what I of course need is um, the floor protector for underneath the stove. What I did with the Tentipi now, with the floor itself, because this is a model with a big zipper in the middle, I opened it up so when I go into the tent with my boots on, I don't uh, dirty the flooring itself. But now, um, what should I do? Should I put this on the grass or should I close the flooring? What I would do is probably close the flooring because now I can have this one and get my dirty feet on there. So just close the zipper. Oops. I guess get a peg out of the way here. Now what I can do now is get the Winnowell flooring, get my jacket out of the way. And it's a little bit wet from the grass, to be honest. Um, and officially it's called the Winnowell Fireproof Mat. Uh, what I do like is that it's got these notches, openings. So if you're not using it together with a floor, you can still peg it down onto the grass. Uh, if it's dry, that's of course a very good idea. Uh, but what I can do now is I just placed the stove on top of this one. And let me get the stove. And let me move it in here 
I like always to place it in front of the um, in front of the tent pole, which is I think quite logical, of course. Now you've seen me about the pipe sections, and this is what I do. Um, the first two I put on top of the stove. This is the one with the regulator, and what I always notice is that the fit it is really tight, which is for a certain part it's of course how it should be but sometimes it is a hassle um, when you've got the pipes together um, and when you want to take them apart sometimes it takes two persons i've been pulling on them with my wife so many times now um, that it's really hard to get two pipe sections out of each other uh, but hey um, a tight fit is important of course but this one is sometimes a little bit too tight now then i put the second part on top of it and um, if you don't know about tentipis then um, tentipi has got a very special opening in the top for uh, chimneys and if you don't know how this works then watch the videos that i did on the 10tp Saphir 7cp and on the 2cp um, it's on my youtube channel and later i will have a video on this 5cp as well um, so if you want to wait for that one but it has really a nice neat opening on top now i put this pipe piece just on top of the section that i have here and it will go through the roof now it will appear now through the fabric and you will see that this opening fits very very nicely tidy up the velcro around the opening so that when it starts raining no rain will enter the tent now that's the chimney in place and in this case with the double wall tent protector now let me explain a little bit more about the mesh one because if you have this one and um, this goes of course on the basically the pipe goes on the inside and you need to have these screws to basically fix it um, to the pipe that comes with the stove itself. Um, if you use this one, um, you place this one on the pipe before you put on the spark arrester, because otherwise you cannot get this one through, or you have to do it from the underneath, and that's going to be a hell of a job, because it's not that very easy to get this one through the, basically the opening into the 10 TP tent fabric. That's just a little sideline on this one. Let's lay that one aside. And now, I don't know if you notice it, but it is getting quite chilly. I can feel it on my nose. So let me first start making a fire. And in this case, it is pretty easy because I already did some preparation, of course. Where is my firebox? I always take a firebox with me, um, since this is one that I take with the car. But in the firebox, it's exactly the same that I have basically in my backpack. Uh, let me take off my gloves because that will show you it a little bit easier. Of course, there is um, a piece of birch wood and I don't know if you know this kind of stuff but this is um, yeah, I, I buy it at the DIY store this is a sort of stuff that I use it's a, a sort of filled with resin and it's very good to make a basically to start a fire with but now that I have got the birch wood I don't need that um, what is also a good trick is this stuff which is also basically wood that is filled with resin. It's pine wood. Um, sometimes I find this in nature, sometimes I need to buy it because I can't find it, but this works as well. Now, that in the first place, um, I'm forgetting my matches now, which I should not do, uh, because I like to use matches. You can, of course, use, where is it? A fire steel, that one works as well, but for a stove, I don't find it that practical. And you can use, of course, a power lighter as well. Um, but no, let me use my Swedish matches. Get that one out of the way. Um, and also, what I also have is a box that is filled with uh, wood. Because in the Netherlands, it's not that common um, that if you go to a campsite that there is wood. And basically, you're not allowed to get any wood from um, the forest itself. Unless sometimes it's dead wood, but no, well, I like to bring my own because I know it's dry, it's not going to be too polluting. Um, now, let me grab my mora kniff, excuse me for this. And what I always do is just make a little bit more branch, a little bit smaller. Just some nice scravings, is that, if that's the correct word. Those, you know, like those feathery things because the fire will catch this very easy and then you will have a fire quite rapidly. Now, let me open it. Let's get some birch wood, and then I like to, it gives some dirt into the tent itself, but just to fiddle around a bit with it. 
put it on there. Just a feathery thingy on there as well. What the good thing is about the Mora Knief is that I can use a little bit of wood and I take a block and I can use it as a baton, if that's the correct English word. Kappa. And now I have some smaller woods. Now let me get my Oops, I can't do that with gloves. Just a match. Get it lit. And then get it onto the... And you will see that it's catching fire immediately. Now, let's get some more wood in there. Now, it's nice and filled and I can put length up to about 35, 37 centimeters in there. So in that way, it's diagonal, it's quite deep as well. Now, let me get this last piece in there and close the lid. And now because I've got the regulator open here and also um, the regulator in the chimney itself, there's a really nice airflow going on. So I'm getting really some nice hot or heat already from this one. Now, let me demonstrate something which is quite important to me at the moment because it is getting chilly and chilly and chillier. Um, that is one of the nice accessories from Winnowell. And that is basically the water kettle. And it just fits really nicely on top of the stove and next to the chimney. And now let me grab some water. I don't know, you can't see this really well because the lid is there. Put some water in there. And then in a few minutes, I will have a nice cup of hot coffee. Close the lid. And the good thing about this kettle is basically that it gets not only its heat from the cooking surface, but also because of the chimney is nice wrapped around the whole um, kettle itself. Now let's fold this one up again because it is in my way. And now let's continue with talking about the stove itself. The stove is of course for heating the tent, but it's also very nice to do some cooking on. And the cooking surface of the 32 millimeter thick top basically, um, it is um, 383 millimeters in depth if you look at it in this way and it is 230 millimeters in width. Now when I open up both those extensions um, and this is a very nice surface if you have some pots and you, you cook for more people maybe and um, you want to simmer them on the side it's very easy but it's also not very nice if you've got wet socks for example um, you can dry them here as well. Now the cooking surface is because it is limited not to the full distance of the stove of course because of this um, it is 285 millimeters in width and this is 525 uh, millimeters. Now the cooking distance from the ground to the top level here is 427 millimeters. Um, what I do like about the Winnable stove is that it has a lid on the top and you see how hard the fire is burning at the moment so let me reduce the heat a little bit just by twisting this regulator and it's a really fine regulator it works absolutely super um, is that I can take off this piece of course and now I will not do this with my gloves because this is really hot at the moment but I've got the ash scraper it's got a tool in there um, that I can use it like a hook and now I can put it on the side but I will put it on the mat basically and what I can do now because this is an opening I've got direct heat so this is very nice if you want to use a normal kettle because now the kettle gets direct heat from the fire. Um, so you don't have to, if you have this one already, you don't have to buy that one basically. Um, it's also very nice if you have a Dutch oven and you want to cook some bread. You hear this? Water is boiling already. So I'm going to make myself a cup of tea, but not with this one. And let me get this one out of the way, put it on top of the mat um, and use the ash scraper lid thingy again to close it. Now, get this one out of the way, that one up. Let me have a look. Ooh, nice. Um, let me grab a cup of coffee. Kupilka, granulate. 
There are some people in the outdoor business who hate me for this. Um, maybe you've seen the review that I did on the RubyTech grinder and coffee set, um, which works as a treat as well. I'll put the link in the description below and at the end of this video up there as well. Um, but I really love coffee granulate. Now, all what I do is now get some nice hot water out of it. Ooh. Hoppa. And now I am having a nice coffee. But that's too hot for the moment. Now let's continue with something about temperatures. Now for those of you who've seen my review of the 10TP Safi 2 with this stove in it then you might remember that I made some remarks on this stove in that tent and that especially where basically the chimney, the double wall chimney hits the tent fabric that it got dangerously hot to my opinion. Now let me grab my infrared thermometer that's not the most easiest word to say for a duchy um, and I will show you a little bit on the temperatures on this one in the 5 CP and now let me grab the DJI Pocket 2 as well so I can show you two things simultaneously because I want to show you what I do and the measurements that I actually take. Now let's start with the chimney itself, itself and then near the point where it basically leaves um, the stove. Now this is what I measure. It's 190 degrees, which is quite hot. Now let me take onto the frying top. This one, it is 194. The removable part, that's even hotter, 260, 40. It differs a bit, of course, where I shine the infrared beam 260 now the belly on the side I measure about 160 now let's open the door and I'll show you how hot it gets inside now this is not going to be easy let me shine onto the burning wood um, oh you will notice immediately um, and this is not easy to show you this because I can't see the screen actually, but it is high. So that means it is over 500 degrees Celsius inside the window well, which I think is ridiculously hot. But still, if you want to have a warm tent and some nice meals in the night, it's perfectly all right. Now, one crucial thing, of course, and that is how hot will it gets where it hits the tent fabric. It's quite difficult and it might not be 100% accurate, but it is between, let's say, what is it? 77, uh, more or less 77, 80 degrees, which sounds like a lot, but Tentipi uh, explained to me that the tent fabrics are actually made to withstand temperatures that are a little bit higher. So the Woodlander medium inside a 10TP Safi 5 is not a problem. Um, with a 2CP I would definitely not advise it. Um, go for a smaller one. Windowell has got a small one by now as well. Um, I would advise you to buy one of these because it's really well good to know how hot the stove gets. It's also because not only because of safety but also you know how efficient it is and if you want to cook something um, it's also nice to know how hot basically the surface is if it's ready. Now let me put that one away. Um, one other thing about safety um, that if you are camping with kids and I love to do it with my wife and our two daughters um, the sweetest thing for them is that when the stove is on in the morning and they know it's cold outside and a little bit damp and they're still in their sleeping bags they hear the fire they hear the kettle boiling that's really a super experience for them but be aware that because the stove is hot when they run out the tent or run into the tent um, if you've got really young kids make sure you've got a sort of a fence around it maybe the, the things that you can buy for dogs they have also got some special um, not from Winwell, I think but some special guard, guard things as well um, when we're talking about kids in the morning what is really a cool thing is and now let me demonstrate this um, when I take this off again what is really nice is that Winnowell also does a 
foldable oven. And the nice thing about this one is that underneath it, there is a mesh. And when you put it on top of the hole, the heat goes directly into the stove or into the furnace itself. And with this, if you've got a little bit of ambition and you want to have a really good time, that what you do, you make a little bit of dough and you make your own bread in the morning or when you take bread from home. And you've got a nice way of heating the bread, basically. This is just something that I wanted to show you. Um, I'll put the prices uh, of this thing in the description below. Uh, let me put this somewhere over there now because it will be hot on the bottom. And let's not make the mistake to do it with my gloves because this is very hot as well. Now, one final remark on safety. Um, if you have a stove in the tent, always make sure you've got the ventilation openings open. And one thing that you should definitely bring, which is always in my bag basically, um, is a coal monoxide warning device. Um, and make sure that the battery that's in there is also fresh and that you check it before using it. Like so. And don't put this one somewhere in the top of your tent because that's not where the coal monoxide is. It's on the surface where you are sleeping. So put this one next to your head or on the same level of your head, not next to your ear because you will go deaf, but be aware that it should be on the lower parts of your tent um, so that when the coal monoxide is there, that you are warned. Now, that was a lot of information on this nice medium stove. So let's head on to my verdict. How do I rate the Winnowell Woodlander medium tent stove? Well, in the first place, I like the compact pack size and I do like the weight because it is not that heavy. Um, I also do like the way how it has been manufactured because it's really well done. What I love, and that's one of the most important things of this little stove, is the fact that there is a little window so that when I sit in my tent at night or when I'm outside my tent, I can look at the fire that's burning. It's a really nice, cozy feeling. And it's also safe because you still see that the fire is burning, even if you're not that close. Um, I do like the fact that you can open the top lid because you can put a nice Dutch oven on there or a normal kettle. I also do like the fact that Winnowell has got a lot of accessories to the stove. The two things that I basically don't like is in the first place the fact that the pipes, they are very difficult to get apart after you've been using it. That's something that is really, um, I think, a pity. And that if you use this one in the smaller tents, that with the double walled um, chimney tent protector, that the heat bridge from the inner pipe to the outer pipe, it can get extremely hot. Um, so be aware of this if you use it in smaller tents. In the five, it's not a problem. In the seven, it will not be a problem. But don't use this one in the 2CP. Use the mesh protector. Last but not least, let's talk about the price. The Woodlander Medium retails for 338 euros, which I think is a okay price to pay for a stove of this quality. But you're not there yet, because with the Woodlander, you only have got the normal, regular pipe, chimney. Um, what you do need if you want to use it inside a tent is basically the double vault chimney, which retails for 56 euros, or you need the mesh um, tent protector, which retails for 48 euros. Next to that, I think you should buy the fireproof mat as well, which retails for 59 euros. Now, if you want to carry everything with you, then you need the bag as well, and the bag retails for 46 euros. Um, then what? Winnable also would like to advise is that you also buy the pipe brush so you can clean the pipe after you've used it a lot of times because when you've got a buildup of residue in there that's dangerous too and that will set you back another 14 euros. So if we take everything together then the set that I'm reviewing here is about the 500 euros which I still think is a okay price to pay for the whole set but it's the price that you pay for a lot of other stainless steel stoves as well. Now, because of the two minus points, remember, the pipes that are really stuck together after you've used it and the heat bridge on the double walled chimney, um, I rate the Winnowell Woodlander medium 10 stove at 7.8 points out of 10 total. Now, with the stove burning inside the Tantipi and the sun going down, it's getting more chilly outside and warmer inside. This is how I like the outdoor life, to be honest. 
If you like this video, then please give it a like and leave a comment below. And also, if you've got any remarks, suggestions, or maybe questions, use the comment section because that's what it's for. And I'm more than happy to answer everything that you can throw at me. If this was the first video that you've seen of me and you liked it, then please subscribe to my channel and don't forget to hit the alarm bell so you know when I uploaded a new video because with more subscribers I can make more reviews simple as that and this is what I love doing um, not only for me but also because of you uh, I'd like to give information about the gear that I use and about the gear that I am offered to test um, still I'm not being paid for this kind of stuff um, so really if you like what I do subscribe to my channel now um, if you're not totally convinced, then I'll put a playlist up here and also in the description below with the stuff that you've seen in this video that I also reviewed. For example, the Hester gloves, um, the Hulta Force X that I've been using to chop some wood, and also these. Um, they are chair buddies. Nice little feet that prevent the Helinox that I also reviewed, um, preventing them from sinking into the ground. Very clever product. Now, um, so if you continue watching, enjoy my videos. If you're done for today, then enjoy the outdoors and stay safe. Ciao, ciao. Bam. And now I can have my coffee. And I think it's cold, but who cares? <laughs> this is cold. I'll get some new. Enjoy your evening.